In this video, I'm going to talk about brunsted lowry acid-base theory. The first acid-base theory that is generally studied is the Arrhenius acid-base definitions. And what he said was that acids gave off hydrogen ions when put into a solution and bases gave off hydroxide ions when put into a solution. And when you combine these two, you they neutralize each other and make water and a salt. But they soon realized that there were some substances that would neutralize an acid that didn't have an OH on them, didn't weren't hydroxides. And so a second definition was needed. Although worded differently, the acid definition is pretty much the same as it was with the Arrhenius theory. For the Brunsted-Lowry theory, an acid is defined as anything that releases protons in a solution. Well, if you think about hydrogen, hydrogen has one proton in its nucleus and one electron outside of its nucleus. A hydrogen ion is H+, plus, which means that this outer electron has been removed and now it's just a proton. The theory says that acids release protons in solution. Protons are actually hydrogen ions. So it's really saying the same thing as the Arrhenius acid theory also says. You can think of it the same way, that hydrogen ions are going to be released in a solution. The difference comes with the base. Because they found some bases that did not contain hydroxide, but were able to neutralize acids, they defined a base as something that could absorb those protons in a solution. In other words, it attaches those protons, those hydrogen ions, and it takes them out of the solution so that they're not uh, free to make it acidic. So you can kind of think of a base as sort of like a sponge that absorbs those protons. So an example of this would be ammonia, which is NH3. And when ammonia comes along and you mix it with an acid, like let's say HCl. We know that the acid is going to release that hydrogen ion. And it's gonna come over here and it's gonna stick on that ammonia to become ammonium ion. So notice it was NH3, but now we stuck this hydrogen ion on there and it became NH4 with that positive charge from the ion. And what's left of the acid is just chloride ions. This is our base because when we look at it on this side, it has three hydrogens. When we look at it on this side, it has four, so it gained a hydrogen. And this is our acid because if we look at it on this side, it was HCl, it had one hydrogen. When we find Cl on this side, it has zero hydrogens, and so it lost a hydrogen. Now, these are reversible reactions, which means they can go in the forward and the reverse direction. If this went in the reverse direction, then our NH4 becomes NH3 it loses a hydrogen, which is what acids do. So this is called a conjugate acid. Notice the base becomes the conjugate acid. If you gain a hydrogen going this way, you have to lose a hydrogen to get back. And our acid, HCl, lost its hydrogen to become Cl, but in the reverse direction, it has to go from Cl to HCl. It has to grab a hydrogen, gain a hydrogen. So that is called a conjugate base because something that gains hydrogens is a base. 
the base on this side always becomes the conjugate acid. Don't look at the hydrogens, look at the things that are not hydrogen. So our nitrogen, nitrogen. And then our acid becomes our conjugate base because if it loses a hydrogen going this way, it has to gain a hydrogen to get back. And that is the Brunstead-Lowry acid base definition. I hope this has helped and I hope you come back and check out some of my other tutorials. I've done quite a few for the chemistry course and have a great day.